happens again, Lane Kiffin is going to be booted out of USC. Yeah, Lane Kiffin has really had a, a, a tough tenure coaching football teams. He started out a few years ago with the Oakland Raiders. Didn't work out for him on the big stage in the NFL. He did take the Tennessee Volunteers to the Chick-fil-A Bowl game, but a lot of scrutiny from Tennessee fans. Some, some underlying turmoil came out after he took the job at USC. Uh, has done a good job at SC, but just really hasn't lived up. USC has not lived up to the expectations this season by any means that people expected them to. Matt Barkley's not going to win a Heisman, and USC certainly not going to win a national championship, and very well could not even finish in the top 25 unless they knock off Notre Dame tomorrow and win their bowl game. So certainly USC just in a disappointing season overall, and Notre Dame has just had a spectacular season. You know, they've beaten the good teams on their schedule. They've beaten the bad teams on their schedule. You couldn't ask for more out of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, but it's all on the line once again tomorrow night against the USC Trojans and their young freshman quarterback, Max Wittick. As we, say, Chris, one more thing from Steven. Here we go. Yep. Um, Tell me to, to begin the season, the expectations for USC. It was mainly because of Matt Barkley being a projected number one overall pick in the NFL draft. Uh, in 2013, his drafts, his draft is great. Really, you now, like the grade that you would get, like of uh, one through a hundred, what you would get if um, with the expectations and you know the potential of being an NFL star. His grade has dropped. Is it the poor play that he has uh, like performed and really has led USC to a bad record and a not even a top 25 ranking? And then the injury is going to be a bigger issue. But um, I think the only way Barkley um, gets into the top five in the quarterback position, not just overall, but in the quarterback position, he needs to have a great combine, and the scouts need to see him having a fresh shoulder because that injury could come back to bite him. For example, Matthew Stafford had some uh, shoulder problems throughout his career in Detroit, but in the last two seasons, he's really... Um, not have those injuries and really help a lot. And so, hopefully, the injuries, the injuries don't plague him. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, he has a bright career with whoever he plays for. I like Matt Barkley. He's a really good player. I uh, loved him last year, but this year, he's been a disappointment. Well, that, that brings me to my next question for you. You know, coming into the season, Matt Barkley was the for sure number one overall pick in the NFL unless he were to get injured. I don't really think the shoulder injury will be too serious, but like I said earlier, shoulder injuries tend to reoccur, especially for quarterbacks who obviously need that right shoulder. But my question to you is that who do you think will be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft in April? You know, it's it's not going to be Matt Barkley. It's probably not going to be Landry Jones of Oklahoma. I mean, who can we expect to be that number one overall pick this year? Uh, it's going to be a, de- a defensive player, and expect uh, out of Georgia. There's two players I have. Actually, I'll go with three. The first one is Monte Tail of Notre Dame. Uh, he's gone through so much this season, um, just uh, on the field and off the field. Uh, he's done so much, and so many tragedies have happened, and he's really did a great job in, to overcome that. He really perform at his peak, and he's he's going to be in the top five overall uh, going to the draft. Also, we get Jarvis Jones, the outside linebacker at Georgia. He's probably, I think in my opinion, he is the, uh, he has replaced Matt Buckley on the number one on the top of the chart for uh, players to, you know, check out for the NFL draft for a number one overall pick. The speed, uh, how how he really tackles and how he gets through the holes to get the, get the quarterback into the running back for a loss is Unbelievable. He has uh, he has so much potential, and expect him to be someone like a junior Seau, so like a Brian Urlacher in a way. He has that speed. He has that physicality. And then last one, he's a defensive tackle out of Utah. His first name is Star. His last name is Lotuliati. He obviously has Barry Tongan, and he is a beast at the at the defensive tackle position. He is. Uh, uh, expect um, 
him to also be a number one overall pick. He's a very big boy, and he's, you know, he, I can compare him to possibly uh, Nada, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, defensive tackle for the Ravens. And then um, also look at him as a Ray Lewis for the defensive tackle. His, his physicality, along with Jarvis Jones, is it's just zero to none, really. It's just unbelievable. Well, we certainly knew coming into the season that Star Lotu Lele was going to be high up there on the NFL draft boards. Unfortunately, his Utah Utes team didn't do all that well this season, but certainly really hasn't affected his draft stock. He had a great season so far. Now, last part. I'm going to ask you about six or seven, possibly eight, possibly nine games here, and you're going to give me your predictions. All ready? Uh, I got you. Notre Dame at USC. We just talked a lot about Notre Dame and USC. You said you Notre Dame's going to blow out, blow them out. What, what's your prediction for this game? Uh, I got you. I got Notre Dame. I gave an easy one for the Irish, and just another game that will get them to a national title. How about Auburn? Zero and seven in the SEC. Just less than two years after winning a national championship at last year's national championship winner, Alabama. Uh, Auburn and Alabama, that's going to be an easy game. And that's going to go to the rolling tide, the, the tide, really. Just, it's going to be a blow. It's going to be hard for me to watch because two years ago we saw Auburn go undefeated and win national title with Camden. And I feel really bad for Gene Shizek. Uh He hasn't really found a replacement at the quarterback position since Cam Newton left for the NFL. So I'm, he's going to get fired at the end of the season. But an easy one for Alabama. But it's going to be a very sweet moment for me because I, I really like the way that Gene Shizek, um took control of the Auburn team and it really um, made and you know sculpted Cam Newton into a bright young quarterback right now in the NFL. A high-scoring Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets offense against a Georgia Bulldog defense that doesn't give up that many points. I was talking to you about Jarvis Jones, the outside linebacker from Georgia, and I think that he's going to really stall in this game because with the Georgia Tech triple option uh, formation that they usually offer at the end, a lot of running plays, that means, and then Jarvis Jones will be really uh, make a key impact in the game, stopping the run offense out of the Yellow Jackets, which have been really successful in the last probably five to ten years. So I want to give this an easy game to the Bulldogs. And look out for Aaron Murray. He's a sleeper at the quarterback position. There's some big stuff in here. Florida at Florida State. Florida State's only loss this year coming against the North Carolina State Wolfpack, a one-point loss a couple weeks ago. And how about the Gators? 10-1, and one, their only loss coming earlier this season. Uh, why, how do you like this matchup right here, Florida at Florida State? Here at the outside here, i got Florida State beating uh, Florida I think that the Florida State defense, uh, which is always uh, very hot and uh, always performing extraordinary, just will stop the Florida offense, which have had some ups and downs, uh, especially in the second part of the season after losing their first game to, uh, who was it, South Carolina, not South Carolina, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to figure that out, too. I think it, it might have been to Georgia. Yeah, it was Georgia, definitely. That was a, against, uh, that was the Georgia, that was the Florida Georgia game, right? That's right, that's right. Jacksonville. So, um, I gotta give Florida State the win, especially at home. The home field, the home field advantage really helps out for anyone in a rivalry game. Just look at the Washington, Washington State game I brought up, uh, right at the beginning of my, uh, call here. So, got Florida State, the Seminoles beating Florida, and, uh, I think that the ACC championship game is going to be won by Florida State, too. So look out for them to possibly sneak in uh, into the national title game if uh, some teams do lose. Yeah, well, it certainly would take a lot for Florida State uh, to go from 10 to either the 1 or 2 slot. But, you know, we've seen crazier things in college football. The Oregon Definitely. Ducks coming off of their first loss of the season against Stanford in overtime last week. Against Oregon State, it's the civil war between Oregon and Oregon State. Who do you got in that game? It's going to be a big game for the Ducks, and I'll get them as the winners. 
Uh, they are they are pretty good against Oregon State at Oregon State at Provera. So uh, I want to look at Oregon uh, really to really make a comeback after their really season-ending loss that really cost them the national title. Uh, but you, I, I was expecting Oregon to lose in the in a two-game span starting last week and ending this week. I was expecting to lose to Stanford or Oregon State and they obviously lost to Stanford uh, because the schedule for Oregon State, or pardon me, Oregon, was hard already. Stanford or Oregon State, the two hottest teams in the Pac-12, you're playing them on the road. Uh, Stanford at home and then Oregon State on the road, especially against a robber game. I know Oregon this game, Ken John Barner is going to have a breakout game. How about the Stanford Cardinal at the UCLA Bruins? Both these teams have knocked off USC so far this season. UCLA looked very good last week against USC. Their young quarterback, Brett Hundley, the redshirt freshman, has been absolutely fantastic this season. Stanford just seems to have everything always go right for them uh, so far this season as well. Who do you like in this game in Pasadena? Stanford, number 8, UCLA, number 17. Um, I'm going to get Stanford to win, and uh, this is, um, they're going to play again because if Stanford wins... Uh, that game against UCLA is going to be a rematch of the Pac-12 title game because Stanford will clinch the North Division because beating Oregon will give Stanford and Oregon a tie for first and then Stanford will, have the, will win the tiebreaker because they beat Oregon. So Stanford, UCLA, I guess Stanford the win, Pasadena and then last but not least the uh, Pac-12 title game. I give it again to Stanford because they'll have uh, more of an advantage, more momentum at home at the farm. Yeah, how crazy would that be, uh, playing the same team back-to-back -back weeks? You don't see that very often in college football. The battle for South Carolina. South Carolina, the number 12 team in the nation, visiting Clemson, the number 11 team to the, in the nation. Clemson's only loss coming this year at Florida State. Who do you like in this game? Uh, the Palomino uh, State, really. This is one of the favorite, this is, for, my, for me, one of the favorite rivalries to watch especially in the recent years, that both of these teams have been really good during the regular season. I want to give this game to Clemson, only because they're home. They have possibly one of the best fans uh, in the East Coast region. Uh, obviously, their tradition their tradition is far from none. And uh, in South Carolina, obviously, they lost Marcus Lattimore again. And their offense has been shaky without Lattimore in the past two seasons. So I want to give this an easy game to Taj Boyd and the Clemson Tigers. Wow. I mean, so South Carolina, at the beginning of the season, had national championship hopes and might very well end the season with a 9-3 and record. Oklahoma State visits Oklahoma. Oklahoma, another one of those teams, a lot like SC, whose senior quarterback decided to come back for their senior season. Landry Jones, in that case, for Oklahoma. Oklahoma's lost two tough games so far this year, one of them coming against Notre Dame, Oklahoma State has been a very improved ball club as late of late. They're five and twelve in the Big Twelve play. Who do you like in this game? Oklahoma State, who defeated Oklahoma for the first time in a long time last year, led by Brandon Whedon last year, of course. Or how, or the Sooners at home. Sooners are very tough at home. Sooners are like them as the winners at home. Um, I said it before. I said it earlier. I was surprised that Oklahoma lost to Notre Dame at home. But both lost uh, games that Oklahoma has, you know, had this season, they're both at home. They lost to Kansas State very early in the year at home, uh, led by Colin Klein for the Wildcats, and they lost to uh, the Irish at home. So even though that's happened, Kansas State and Notre Dame, obviously one of the best teams in the nation right now, uh, even though Kansas State just lost to Baylor last week. So... I'll give Oklahoma the edge here because they're, I think that they'll be ready to play their uh, in-state rival of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Obviously a struggling year without uh, quarterback Brandon Whedon and wide receiver Justin Black. And finally, Michigan, the, Michigan, the Michigan Wolverines will be visiting Ohio State. The undefeated Buckeyes are not eligible for postseason play uh, due to a NCAA sanction that was put on them. I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but a couple years ago, their players were selling memorabilia for tattoos. Not too smart of the 
Former Buckeye players, Jim Trestle's out. It's Urban Meyer's era now, and he's done a fantastic